beans per class C, so three or four per 255. That's a substantial number of people. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about how you can protect yourself. So well, we gave you an address. You could have found this through a scan. In this case, we gave it to you. This is NB stat as a program built into Windows. What are you going to find out here? Um, I'm going to get the adapter status, which it tells me that it's running the file server service, which is hex 20 here, and that's the file server name. Okay. So we now know the file server name. We know the work group name. We know the computer name. Yeah. Now what do you do? So from here, I can list the shares on the machine with net.exe. So I'm going to do a net view. So we're just entering the IP address and saying, let's view those shares. And we see that there's a share, CCCC. That, uh, that's the drive that was set up to be shared? Yes. OK, probably the C drive. All right, so if I try and mount that drive with net by doing a net use, these are all standard Windows commands. Aha, you need the password. I see that I need a password. So there's a bug that exists in Windows 95, 98, and ME that allows you to send over uh, doing the, the previous dialect of NetBIOS used by Windows 3.1 to send over one character. And if it matches the first character of the password, then it allows you to connect to it. So it means only, in only 26 tries, you'll be able to crack yeah. it. Now this, by the way, is a flaw that did ship with Windows ME. Microsoft has since patched this flaw, and we want to underscore that. Don't turn on file sharing. Use a password. Patch your software. But the fact that this shipped this way is pretty astounding. So you're going to say the IP address, the share, and this free program that's available, a cracking program called PQuack, is going to look for the uh, file, the uh, password. So what it does is it tries it the different it. characters, and it got the password, I am there. It found it that fast. And so, so we know it's password. I go back to here, and I enter in the password, I am there, and now I've mounted the C drive on that machine as E. So you're actually on the computer? Yes. You have full access to the hard drive? Yeah, I have access to the hard drive, but I can't run programs yet. So what okay. I'm going to do is, is I'm going to copy bo.exe, which is a back Orifice 2000 server, and place it in the w C colon Windows. Uh, this is the remote computer we're yes. looking at right here. You're going to copy it to its hard drive. Start menu, programs, <laughs> startup. So you're going to make it start up back orifice every time it turns on. Now, you wouldn't normally do something so obvious. I would imagine um, you'd hide actually, it a little bit better. It only has to run it one time, then back orifice installs itself in the C colon Windows system directory. Oh, OK. And it uses a run command in the uh, registry from then on to launch itself. So I don't have this program ported over to Windows. So I'm going to connect to the Linux machine that we have. So this this would be your machine as the as yeah yeah. Um, so I'm going to send. This is a bug that exists in uh, Windows uh, 95 and 98, and it sends a malformed Windows Messenger service. Packet. We need to restart this machine to get back Orifice running, right? So what I'm going to do is this crashes the machine, and I need the name from here. Which, which is, is the zero, zero 003 is the Windows Messenger server service. And I just paste that into that window. And now that machine is. Is it rebooting, Yosh? Uh, yeah. You crashed it. <laughs> so what the hacker has done now remotely over the network is put a Trojan horse on your system, back orifice in this case, has restarted the machine so that back orifice will run. It will then install itself invisibly on the machine. And now you can log back in, not using this. Yeah. Front door, but using the back door you've put on there. Is so that right? I'm gonna uh, quit share, quit uh, or turn off unmount, the share. Yeah, unmount the share. Okay. And then I'm gonna run my back orifice client. This is the local client that's gonna hook up to the server on the other machine. And is the machine booted up fully yet, Yosh? Because we can't do this obviously till the machine yeah. is fully booted. So. This is Back Orifice 2000. It's a program written by the Cult of the Dead Cow. It's available at bo2k.com. A uh, fine piece of software. Well, considered by uh, many to be a virus or a Trojan horse. In fact, Norton will discover this on your system. When, when actually it's more powerful and more reliable and smaller and free. It's a remote as server. Compared, yeah, for a remote. Pro do you uh, use this? Would you use this as a remote server on your own systems? Um, yes, and I do. You do? Even yeah. though it's, it's kind of been compromised, people could find you, right? Um, no, it, you can set what type of encryption you use. So the security is better on this than yeah. Windows? <laughs> it's, it's better than Microsoft's SMS. I love it. <laughs> okay. So is the machine up yet? All right. So we should be able to see the machine. So I'm going to click Connect. Ooh. Oh, maybe it's not up quite yet.
You can see how easy this was. It didn't take very long. Is it fully started? Are we on the Windows desktop? Oh, yeah. Browsing. Okay. When demos go awry. Well, that's not unusual, but a hacker never gives up, does he? Um, yeah, all I'd have to do is, is uh, let me verify. Get back I'm on and make sure it launched. What should people do to avoid get? I mean, this is a very, you saw how easy this was. It took them four minutes to basically compromise this machine. Um, turn off file sharing, um, upgrade your Windows computer. So it patches those holes. Don't run software from places that you don't know the content of what you're downloading, and also don't run uh, attachments to email. Because it could be back orifice. Yeah, all Once it's have, on there. All a hacker has to do is get you to run one piece of software. Ultimately, can, is Windows secure now? I mean, if I've applied all the patches, are there still known holes that people could take advantage of? Um, there, there's the fact that NetBIOS is by and far the biggest hole in Windows, and, and they continue to use that for file sharing, and it's the only reason they maintain that protocol is to be reverse compatible with older versions of Windows. And there exists a vulnerability in which you can man in the middle every NetBIOS connection over the network. We won't show you how to do that. Would you keep working on this, Abe? Because I want you to control that machine, okay? And we're going to come back and see how you're doing. If you want to learn more about how to, you see how easy that was? You want to learn more about how to protect yourself from hackers, go to thescreensavers.com. Abe has written some tips to protect the home PC user. And we're going to show you how he can control the machine in just a bit. Pat, what's coming up on the show? All right, stay where you are, folks. Still to come on this very show.